Hello and welcome to Study IQ. I am your friend Rahul Saigaonkar. Let's continue our discussion of NCRT Science series. You all know on Study IQ we are running the science based NCRT discussion where we have already reached to class 8. So today will be the next discussion from class 8 science NCRT. But you already know class 6 and class 7 have been completed. They are already there on Study IQ IS channel. You can always refer to those particular video lectures for more comprehensive understanding. In fact, I will be sharing the entire playlist of the science based discussion on this particular ID at the rate Rahul Sai triple two on both Instagram as well as Telegram channel. The playlist details would be uploaded here. In fact, if you search this also, you will get the playlist. You will get all the playlists that I have created, right? All right. So, let us go directly to today's agenda. Today's agenda is to discuss a chapter from NCRT science class 8. In our previous discussions, we spoke about crop production and management. In the last discussion, we spoke about microorganisms. We saw that many microorganisms are helpful for us, but many other microbes, they give us diseases, not just to humans, but plants, animals as well. Today, we will talk about synthetic fibers and plastics. If you can recall in our interaction before in NCRT 6 and NCRT 7, we have discussed two specific chapters, fibers to fabrics. And there we spoke that if I want to create a fabric, what do I need? I need basic fibers to create those. From fibers, I create a yarn. And from that yarn, I eventually create a shirt like this. For example, if I need a shirt like this, what do I need? I need some fibers. And what can be these fibers? These fibers can be natural fibers or artificial fibers. That understanding we have already developed. And today, we will talk about these artificial synthetic fibers and plastics. So, without any delay, let us begin our discussion. As I told you, to create a fabric, what do I need? I need fibers. And from where do I get these fibers? I can get these fibers from natural sources. That means I can get them from plants or I can get them even from animals. In fact, in our previous lectures, we have discussed this. We have spoken about cotton as a source of fibers, cotton shirts. See, if this shirt is of cotton, I'd be I would be going for crop production of cotton, then the cotton would be slowly and steadily made into a thread, then a yarn, then a fabric and then ultimately the shirt, right. We have seen how cotton is used, how wool is made, what kinds of wools are produced, we have spoken about that, we have also spoken about silk. In our earlier interactions, we spoke about sericulture, right, development or production of silk. Apart from that, other natural fibers can be linen, in fact, this has become very famous these days. You must have seen in those Raymond ads, right? Linen, the classic shirts, right? Linen is natural fiber. Bamboo is a natural fiber. Hemp, jute, these are all examples of natural fibers, right? So, fibers can be natural or fibers can also be from artificial sources and that is the agenda of our today's discussion. So, first things first, what is the definition of synthetic fiber? As I told you, a fabric can be made from fibers, fiber can be natural or artificial. Artificial means man-made. So, any kind of man-made fiber is called a synthetic fiber. There are many examples of that. Right? In, our, in our everyday life, we use so many synthetic fibers. These days, you must have seen the ropes are made up of synthetic fibers. Your clothes are made up of synthetic fibers. I am quite sure if you go to gym, your gym wear or the gym shorts, gym t-shirt, they are made from synthetic fibers, right? Now, please remember, majority of synthetic fibers are prepared from petroleum based chemicals, that is petrochemicals. Now, please note, I have written majority here, all right? Although, if you talk about NCRT, NCRT highlights that all the synthetic fibers are prepared by a number of processes using raw materials of petrochemical origin, of petrochemical origin or petrochemicals. Now, why I have written majority? Because there are some fabrics or some fibers that we use which are not exactly petrochemicals which are say for example we even create fibers from wood pulp which is not a petroleum based source that's why i've written majority here right these are some of the examples in fact we'll be talking about them in some time but the next question in front of us is sir how do we how do we create this how do i make this synthetic fiber the synthetic fiber is basically made from a process chemical process called as polymerization right polymer synthetic fiber is nothing but a polymer right now for a polymer we need 
first constituent or the chemical compound called monomer. For example, if this shirt, let us imagine this shirt is a synthetic shirt or it is made up of synthetic fabric. That means the fiber that is used is synthetic. And for this synthetic fiber, I used a chemical component called X. Hypothetical example. Now, polymerization is a chemical reaction where I would be continuously creating a chain of this chemical and this leads to creation of a fiber. Once a fiber is created, again, you create a yarn and then a fabric and then you sew and create whatever component you want. That is polymerization. So, polymerization is a process of bringing monomer molecules together to form polymer. There are different kinds of polymerization reactions also. Please remember, there is a misconception among students that polymerization always leads to a structure like this. This is a linear structure of polymer. But polymerization can lead even to complex structures. Please remember, polymerization can lead to a linear structure. It can also lead to a branch structure or it can also lead to a three-dimensional structure. In fact, there are different kinds of polymerization reactions depending on the depending on the factors that we used for running the reaction. It can be an addition polymerization. It can lead to a linear structure. It may also lead to a branch structure. There is condensation polymerization which generally leads to a more complex kind of structure. Right? So, please remember this. Synthetic fibers are created as polymers and polymer, it is basically derived from Greek words poly which means many we know we use poly many a times right and mer is means a part or a unit a repeating unit now the question is so do i find this polymerization process in nature also that's a question an mc can can be created here the answer is yes can polymerization occur in nature yes it can occur in nature in fact cotton is a classic example of that Polymers can occur in nature also. So, cotton is made up of what? Cellulose. Now, what is this cellulose? Cellulose itself is a polymer where the basic monomer or the basic unit is the glucose unit. So, if anybody asks you, polymerization or polymers can only be created through a chemical process, right? Of course, through a chemical process only, but they can occur even naturally. Please remember this. All right? Let's move on. Let's talk about some of the synthetic fibers. First one, rayon. In the class 8 discussion, we talk about rayon. Now, in our previous, previous session, we spoke about silk. And I told you the origin of silk. The origin of silk started in, in China. And I, and I told you a story also. The queen was, uh, one of the Chinese empress was drinking tea. And suddenly an insect fell into her tea. And she saw some kind of a thread and which slowly led to discovery of silk. But the Chinese kept the silk or the idea of silk, the development of silk very much hidden. That's why the need of synthetic silk was felt and mostly during the industrial revolution these things developed and many different kinds of synthetic silks started to come into the market and rayon is also called artificial silk. Now first of all you need to understand rayon is not created from a petrochemical. Right. Rayon is not created from a petrochemical. Please remember. Rayon is obtained from natural source, but it is man-made. Why? It, is, it does not directly come as a fiber. We see cotton. Cotton comes as cotton fiber. Right? Jute, jute come as jute, jute fibers. What you need to do is you simply have to create. You simply have to go for yarn. Uh, you simply have to rotate that, spin it. Ginning, spinning is done for cotton and you get the yarn. But here, you have to go for a man-made process. For instance, rayon. How is rayon created? Rayon is created through a process. We take these wooden logs, we crush them, we shred them, we create a wood pulp. This wood pulp is actually cooked in chemicals. It is cooked, cooked in caustic soda. That means we create alkali wood. And once this alkali wood or alkali cellulose comes, we put that in carbon disulfide. There is no need to mug up this particular process, but I am simply telling you so that you understand how rayon is created. We put them in carbon disulfide and then this is slowly and steadily turned into fibrous metal. All right, that's the basic process. And there is one more thing also. See, rayon is much cheaper than silk and rayon is mixed with cotton also. Please remember, rayon can be mixed with cotton. Rayon is mixed with cotton to make many kinds of bed sheet, etc. Please note that. So, one of the synthetic fibers is rayon, rayon fabric we make. Apart from that, 
we use this extensively nylon is used extensively nylon is again through polymerization it is another man made fiber which was created in 1930s initially when it was created it was created using coal water and air but these days we have developed extensive kinds of nylons extensive chemicals also for example formation of nylon through some sort of chemical reaction you can see this this way we use hexamethylene diamine adipic acid there is no need to mug up these words again but I am simply telling you that since 1930s we have developed or evolved different processes for developing nylon also. Now nylon is used extensively extensively for making fabric for making cloth, for, for mixing in the cotton also you must have seen a cotton nylon mix or cotton polyester mix many a times. So from now on what I want you to do is I want you to check out whenever you buy anything when you go to the market just check behind whenever there is a lab when the, the tag there check near the tag what is the composition of the cloth if it is not available here it will be available on the side side somewhere here inside okay inside the shirt or inside the pant you will get all the details of the uh, the composition just focus on that composition many a times you you do get questions and you can answer from there also from simple observation so nylon it is it is quite strong in fact nylon is used in many places for example if i have to create a parachute right i use nylon because it is light it is strong it is elastic it is lustrous also so we make socks we make ropes tents etc from this nylon itself right nylon apart from nylon we also use polyester now polyester is a generic term please remember polyester it is a type of synthetic fiber where this ester molecule can change it is a polymer of ester so polyester means it is a polymer of a repeating unit which is ester esters are chemicals which we find esters are, are the chemicals which give fruits their smell please remember this pointer esters are the chemicals which give fruits their distinct smell so there can be different kinds of esters and whenever I go for polymerization reaction of one particular ester, I get that polyester. For instance, there is, uh, there is, there is terylene, right? Terylene is a very popular polyester. Terylene shirts, terylene clothes are used. Or else we have PET, polyethylene terephthalate. You must have seen this PET, polyethylene terephthalate. Uh, whenever you see, see, if you are watching this video and if you are gulping down from a bottle, just turn that bottle and see behind the bottle what is written it will be written pet recyclable just check it what is pet polyethylene terephthalate so we we use this kind of polyester for making bottles utensils etc right so polyester is also extensively used for instance terylene is many a times used for mixing with cotton as, as i told you from now on try to do it whenever you buy a shirt go and check what is the composition it will be written 80% cotton plus 20% polyester or some kind of composition would be written just check it out and what kind of polyester that is that also try to note it right now apart from rayon nylon polyester we do use acrylic i'm quite sure you must have heard acrylic paints but have you heard of acrylic fa fabrics also yes we use acrylic fabrics mostly to make sweaters and blankets whatever whatever warm clothes you have if it is not woolen if it is not pure wool then probably it is made up of acrylic in fact acrylic is derived from polymerization of acrylonitrile there are different kinds of acrylics that are already available in the market mostly sweaters are made from acrylic acrylic paints are different in acrylic paints also we do find in fact acrylic fabric paint is also seen we can also get that but Different kinds of acrylics are acrylic, modacrylic, nitrile, lastrile, right? You get so many different kinds of acryl, uh, acrylic fabrics depending on the chemical composition of the fibers. So next time when you buy a sweater, next time when you buy a blanket, I want you to check what material it is made up of. It is made up of some sort of an acrylic material if it is not wool eh? because wool is costly, right? So acrylic metal would be rather cheaper. They would be warm also, right? You must have seen that. Right. So these are some of the synthetic fibers. Now the question is that these days I see less of cotton shirts and more of these, more of these uh, synthetic fiber or synthetic fabrics. They are used, they are being used extensively. That is why the cotton farming is actually going down. Cotton is getting costlier. You must have seen these days, cotton shirts are costlier than your synthetic 
fabrics. Why? Because synthetic fabrics have certain characteristics and certain benefits which are because of which we are using them extensively these days, especially from last many years, I would say last uh, decade or two, use of use of these uh, synthetic fibers has become quite extensive because there are many benefits. First of all, synthetic fibers, they dry up very quickly. That's why you must have seen that. What is it? The gym clothes that you wear, it's called dry fit. You must have seen that. They are more durable also. In comparison to other, other fibers, the synthetic fibers are more durable. They run for a longer time. They are less expensive. As I told you, in terms of money, cotton shirts have become very costly these days. Look at khadi, right? Always Mahatma Gandhi told khadi and charka, but khadi clothes are extremely costly, right? Khadi has become very costly. Why? Because there is a challenge from these synthetic fab fibers or synthetic fabrics, which are less expensive. They are readily available also. Simply use chemicals and create them. They are easily easy to maintain. They are easy to maintain. See, for cotton shirt, what you have to do is earlier, in the earlier times, with cotton, you had to use starch so that the shirt remains uh, very stiff. You have to go for heavy ironing equipment, etc. But these are very easy to maintain. As I told you, if it's a polyester shirt, these days you get, what do you call that? Wrinkle-free shirts, wrinkle-free pants, no need of ironing. What are those? Those are not natural fibers. Those are perhaps a mixture of cotton and some sort of synthetic fiber for sure. So they are easy to maintain. They do not shrink easily. You must have seen this. You must have seen this happening with you. You get a cotton shirt, you wear it, perfect fit. As soon as you put that in the water and dry it, it will be short shirt. That means now it will be useful for your younger brother. <laughs> right? Yeah, this happens. I was beneficiary of that many a times. <laughs> All right. So it can be made into elastic also these days. Again, this gym fit wear that you wear, it's kind of elastic also. They are also resistant to moth attacks. Right? With respect to natural fibers, moths can attack those. There can be holes in it, etc. But these synthetic fibers, no tension with them. Right? These are some of the advantages. But there are certain problems also with these synthetic fabrics. So, a question can be created, MCQ can be created regarding advantages, disadvantages of these synthetic fibers. The disadvantage is they do not absorb moisture. That is why you see whenever you have your own, your towel, right? You use your towel after bath, you use your towel. The towel is mostly made up of cotton or maximum amount of cotton because you want the towel to absorb moisture or absorb water. You never see polyester or nylon towels ever. Why? Because they do not absorb water. They would be rather useless. Apart from that, they are non-resistant to heat. Now, as I told you, you go to gym every day, wear your gym shirt. Before wearing that, do one thing, switch on your iron box and try to iron it. It's going to burn, <laughs> right? The t-shirt the or the shirt is completely gone, right? Because they are non-resistant to heat. If you try ironing them, you'll understand. It will stick to your iron box. Your iron box surface is gone. In fact, in movies and all, you must have seen, whenever there is, there is some kind of fire, a hero is wearing a shirt and there is fire on the hero's shirt, the, sh the hero will simply tear the shirt. Probably a cotton shirt. If it is synthetic, then he would not be able to tear it because it will stick to his skin. And that is where you see the third degree burns that people get whenever there is some sort of fire or something. It is normally connected to the clothes that you wear. If you wear the synthetic fibers and if they burn, they give you extensive skin burns. In movies, that's not possible with synthetic fibers. Remember that, okay? Apart from that, as I told you, it catches fire very easily. Yes, there is also possibility of microplastic pollution. Now, this has been highlighted in recent researches that Synthetic fibers, they eventually lead to microplastic pollution, marine pollution. This is a problem. Apart from that, there is also one more issue that they get electrically charged in dry weather. Now, you must have observed this, especially with the synthetic clothes that you wear, the gym clothes, etc. that you wear. If you are in dry, dry conditions, if you are wearing it, you just move the shirt and there is a sound. There is a click sound or there is an electric spark sound which comes. Not harmful to you, but to some people, it might lead to certain kind of allergies. So, that is one of the disadvantages. But nonetheless, when we, when we talk about 
advantages and disadvantages i would say advantages outweigh these disadvantages for sure right that is why these days synthetic fibers are being used extensively now from mains perspective from mains perspective you need to prepare this more thoroughly for example you need to understand how synthetic fabrics or synthetic fibers are becoming a bigger challenge to the agriculture process in india or synthetic fibers synthetic clothes that are coming especially from bangladesh vietnam how are they challenging india's textile industry or what is india doing to develop more and more or different kinds of synthetic textiles in a more sustainable way such ideas would be very helpful from your mains perspective all right right this is the discussion about synthetic fibers let's move on and talk about plastics right right but before that do remember that our prelims to interview batch 5 is going to begin from 13th may this is the most comprehensive batch where study iq will be hand holding you during prelims during mains in fact if you clear your prelims 2024 examination the entire mains preparation you will be called up to delhi there is a mains residential program there your lodging expenses food everything would be borne out by study iq so your mains preparation your interview guidance everything would be done which is priced at a very affordable range to 9999 if you want this price you have to use my code rahul life you go to the app you go to the website whenever you check out just use the coupon code rahul life and apply it you will get maximum discount might be lesser than that also okay right see you in the class all right after discussion on synthetic fibers let's talk about plastic now this is a very easy discussion because plastics are also polymers you need to remember plastics are also polymers now you can question sir these uh, polymers can we make clothes out of this <laughs> yeah, yeah quite possible yes no issue with that also but remember plastics are again polymers very similar to synthetic fibers but because of different chemicals and different characteristic features their usage is also very different in our day to day life if i simply look around me i'll be finding so much of plastic everywhere so much of plastic a plastic bag a plastic carry bag a polyethylene bag a polystyrene bag or some sort of say uh, if i if i look at uh, what what are the examples of plastic that i can find yeah i can see uh, i can see a stabilizer there over on which there is some sort of coating there is a coating on that there is a coating there on the camera everywhere i can see plastic it is being extensively used Be why because plastic as a polymer it can be very easily molded there is no need to create a plastic fiber it can be easily molded as a material that is why we use them everywhere see there is chair of course there is chair i did not see the chair <laughs> yeah there is a chair this bucket everything is plastic everything in and around us has been extensively covered with this plastic right now the question is so you told plastic is also polymer but what kind of plastics do we find in general whenever we talk about plastics we do divide them in two categories one is thermoplastics and another one is thermosetting plastics now in in simplest of terms in simplest of, of terms thermoplastics are those plastics which soften on heating whenever you heat them they soften that means they can be remolded again but thermosetting plastics whenever you heat them they become a lump they they undergo more and more complex polymerization they become a huge lump you cannot remold them at all basic idea but if we dissect a little and try to understand more about thermoplastic and thermosetting plastic thermoplastic in the thermoplastic there is monomer there is strong link of the polymer chain right and whenever you heat it it softens please remember in the thermosetting plastic there are no cross linked bonds or cross linking of chains is not there in your thermoplastics but in thermosetting plastic you can see there are cross linking bonds or cross linking chains because of which whenever you heat it they become extremely hard and in our day to day life whatever we whatever things we use we have seen both we have seen thermoplastics and thermosetting plastic thermoplastics are these you can see your vessels like this or your boxes like this your wires on your electrical wires there is thermoplastic right but thermosetting plastics are these for example your your key switches right your plates etc these are 
thermoplastic and thermosetting plus now to understand it further we need to differentiate sometimes a question can be created mcq consider the following statement about plastics one statement about thermoplastic one statement about thermosetting plastic now thermoplastic are created by addition polymerization reaction whereas thermosetting thermosetting uh, plastics are created by condensation polymerization reaction here i told you it's a long linear polymer generally but whenever we talk about thermosetting it is a complex 3d structured polymer apart from that whenever we heat it it becomes soft and it again becomes hard after cooling but whenever we heat this it does not become soft it ultimately crumbles down you cannot reuse it again so that is why these are quite expensive easily molded expensive these are less expensive apart from that there is one more very interesting difference whenever we talk about thermoplastic these thermoplastic are soluble in certain organic solvents but thermosetting plastics are never ever soluble apart from that thermoplastics are usually soft but they are not brittle that means they they can be molded they can be easily molded they are not brittle not brittle but these are extremely brittle they are hard and very brittle in nature all right so these can be remolded again just melt them remold again these cannot be remolded there are many examples of this for instance under plastics under the thermoplastics you have polycarbonate uh, polyexymethylene, acrylic, nylon, polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, so many things, right? Teflon. Please remember, many people get confused with this also. PVC, polyvinyl chloride. It's a thermoplastic metal, okay? Apart from that, thermoset metals, vulcanized rubber, bakelite, polyurethane, epoxy, uh, polyurea, melamine. Melamine is a very interesting example here. Melamine, right? Urea, formaldehyde, these are all thermosetting materials, okay? All right. Apart from this, what are the characteristics of plastics? Very interesting. What are the characteristics? See, there are many advantages. That is why we have them extensively in our life these days. First thing is they are not reactive. They do not react extensively. They react only with certain organic solvents that to thermoplastics as I told you. They are non-reactive in general. That's why you carry them very easily. You carry food items in it. You carry so many things in it. Non-reactive. Apart from that, they are very lightweight. They are very lightweight compared to the weight. If we if we check that strength, the same amount of iron and same amount of plastic, I would say plastic would be much stronger, right? In terms of weight, because plastics are lightweight, that's why we use them extensively. They are inexpensive also. They are quite cheap. Mass production is possible once you design. Mass produce the same things using plastic. They are water resistant. Yes. They are shock resistant. Yes. Importantly, they are electrical and thermal insulators. That's why you must have seen them extensively being used in wires etc but there are certain big disadvantages of these plastics now one of the disadvantages is heat deformation whenever you heat it they deform there is also poor mechanical strength mechanical strength is poor you must have seen with chairs that's why people tell by neel kamal why because it is made up from virgin plastic it is tough right if you even if you are 100 kg you can answer sit on it right Apart from that, the biggest disadvantage is it is non-biodegradable. It is non-biodegradable. All right. Now, because of this, you see, if if the life that is needed or number of years are needed for degradation, you know, biodegradation means something that is degraded by the microorganisms. We have seen last discussion itself. We have seen microorganisms are helpful in cleaning environment. Why? Because they biodegrade stuff. They create complex chemicals and turn them into simple compounds, simple chemicals, which can be basically absorbed in soil or biodegraded. When you look at plastic bags, it takes several years. A simple tin aluminum can, it takes about 100 to 500 years. That is why these are also considered as non-biodegradable. Plastic bags, they are non-biodegradable. They can be in your, in your soil, in your atmosphere. For a very long time they do not get degraded easily but if you look at wood clothes cotton etc all these are biodegradable depending on the time period you can see the time period which is given here and that is why we all say plastic leads to a lot of pollution we talk about a mountain of plastic a heap of plastic in our marine regions 
ocean pollution if animals eat it animals gi tract it it gets into problems right we have seen so many examples of that why because it is non biodegradable and that is why we all have to follow this principle if you want sustainability if you have to use these material sustainability sustainably then i would say every citizen has to follow the principle of 5r try to reduce the use of plastic try to reuse the plastic try to recycle the plastic recover and refuse this is going to help in living sustainably there is no need to create more and more plastic if we if we recycle if we reuse if we recover the plastic then we might create some sort of a sustainable model although scientists are working extensively to look out for biodegradation of plastics so please check out these new snippets or current affairs wherever there is some sort of a microorganism or any kind of fungi bacteria which is able to bio degrade plastic it becomes extremely important for us in fact the day we are able to discover any organism which can biodegrade plastic it is going to be a game changer right so let's wait and watch what happens but you also keep looking in the current affairs news for organisms like that okay so this was our discussion on synthetic fibers and plastic a very easy discussion uh, questions can be set up question can be set up on plastics thermoplastic thermosetting plastic different kinds of uh, synthetic fibers what is polymerization different kinds of polymerization reaction right all these things can be asked as mcqs do remember that right again before i before i move out you already know if you like this discussion you can always follow me on this particular id at the rate rahul sai triple two you can message me on ig i do respond on saturdays and sundays again thank you for watching this video jai hind